At this point, as directed by our Obispo Maximo, I will be reading to you his statement dated May 12, year 2021. Iglesia Filipina Independiente, Obispado Maximo. Justice for the death of Ka Joseph Canlas. Statement of the Obispo Maximo on the death of a peasant leader and land reform advocate. Dated May 12, year 2021. Because sentence against an evil deed is not executed speedily, the human heart is fully set to do evil. Though sinners do evil a hundred times and prolong their lives, yet I know that I will be well with those who fear God, because they stand in fear before Him. But it will not be well with the wicked, neither will they prolong their days like a shadow, because they do not stand in fear before God. Quotation from Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 11 to 13. We in the leadership of the Iglesia Filipina Independiente mourn with the struggling Filipino people with the death of Ka Joseph Canlas. On May 11, year 2021, the staunch peasant leader and social activist Ka Joseph Canlas, vice chairperson of Kilusang Magbubukid ng Pilipinas, and leader of Alianza ng Magbubukid sa Gitnang Luzon, succumbed to death due to complications caused by COVID-19. We could remember that he was among the many leader activists subjected to illegal mass arrests and detentions. How can we forget? He was illegally arrested at a peasant community in Pampanga on Holy Tuesday, March 30, year 2021 in a week where we Christians regard as most holy, but desecrated by the state forces with their diabolic illegal arrests of human rights defenders and social activists. Ka Joseph Canlas, being a committed land reform advocate, was not a stranger to the IFI. We have seen his passion in defending the rights of peasants and farmers in their plight and struggle for genuine agrarian reform. His love and fervor for the poor and dedication as peasant leader and community organizer led him to pursue various campaigns and struggles against land grabbing and land use conversion in many farming communities in the central Luzon region. Among the many concerns is the campaign for the repeal of rice liberalization law, his opposition to rice importation, the struggle to increase the farm gate price, of rice grains, his active support for the rights of fisher folk in the region, and his concern in upholding the country's sovereignty in the West Philippine Sea. Indeed, Ka Joseph was a person who loved his country and truly valued the dignity of every person, most especially the poor and struggling peasants. We were able to follow the series of events before and after his questionable arrest last March 30. We know how he, along with numerous labor and peasant leaders, human rights defenders, and social activists, had been subjected first to red tagging and vilification before suffering illegal arrest, detention, and much worse, extrajudicial killings upon others. Ka Joseph endured an ending suffering of injustice after his arrest. KMP states in a news article that he was in a stable physical condition before his arrest. And if only he received proper immediate health and medical attention, considering that he was already 59 years old and is with com comorbidity, and after complaining that he was not feeling well during his detention, he might not have died. Because in the very first place, if he had not been subjected to such illegal arrest caused by being included in the long list of those red-tagged and vilified, Ka Joseph would still be with the people and community which he so dearly loved and cared. His was a common experience by all political detainees and those inmates who are considered insignificant in an unjust society. His experience represents the poor and pitiful condition 
of every poor Filipino who continue to endure the government's lack of proper medical and health security service program for its people. If only the government redirected the billions of public funds being wasted by the National Task Force to end local communist and armed conflict to subject human rights defenders and activists to being targeted as enemy of the state, therefore making them vulnerable to various forms of attacks from state security forces. Hence, on the grounds of a just, compassionate, and humanitarian condition, we call for the release of all political prisoners and to drop all fabricated charges against human rights defenders and social activists. We hold the Duterte regime accountable to the death of Ka Joseph Canlas, along with the, its NTFL that subjected him to red tagging and vilification, only to stifle his legal and constitutional right to dissent. We hold accountable the judge in the regional trial court who issued the baseless warrant of arrests. We hold accountable the state security forces who, according to KMP, had executed a questionable warrant and carried out the illegal arrest, and the jail officials that denied Ka Joseph's family from visiting him and neglected his health condition. It was this monstrous government that condemned Ka Joseph to death. Finally, let us continue to persevere in faithful discipleship and bold witness, standing firm and challenging the ongoing onslaught against God's poor and struggling people, amid the continuing pandemic, persisting tyranny, and worsening economy. And taking comfort that as God will wipe away tear from our eyes, and death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away, and the tr trust in the Lord saying, Look, I am making everything new. From Revelation chapter 25, verse 4 to 5. Justice for God Joseph Canlas and for all those who suffer unending injustices. Stop red tagging. Stop illegal arrest. Free all political prisoners. Junk the Anti-Terrorism Act of 2020. Signed, Rimiliena Timbang, Obispo Maximo. <laughs>